Great. So as uh, Hector was talking about, um, there is a culture that technology is helping to create, and it's hugely empowering. But I want to get really practical now and talk about the technology and do some demonstrations of these applications in earnest in reality. Now, with any demo, it may or may not go well. Um, <laughs> we'll see. OK, I've taken Archie's harness off, by the way, so it can be a bit more relaxed. Let's see if it works. Um, great, so on the first slide, Seeing AI, we've heard a lot about it. It's a free app. It's based on completely mainstream technologies, machine learning, object recognition, text recognition, that sort of thing. But Microsoft have put in the effort, have taken the trouble um, to make it into something that is a perfect combination of those mainstream applications or technological applications into an app that is going to be hugely impactful, is hugely impactful for people with different disabilities. So I'm going to plug in this audio. Is there not a lot of cable? Let's see. Oh, no, I can't. I've got, I've got a phone without a thingy, my Bob. Without a... Okay. I'll do it through there. I'll do it through here. Okay. I meant to bring a little adapter, actually, but I forgot. Sorry. So uh, what we've got here... Okay. So there's a number of different settings that you can have. Oh, by the way, I've turned on my screen. Screen curtain on. That's how I'd normally have it, to save my battery and be a bit more private. But I'll Screen curtain off. turn it off. Um, and I've also slowed it down a lot for you guys. So, Seeing II won an award last week at the Glomos in Barcelona, a well-deserved award in the accessibility category. And it has a number of different functions. Okay, it thinks it's looking at a document here. So I'm going to, obviously, as a blind person, being able to read text, the letters that you have, Okay, I'm going to put it down on a document here and lift it up. No edges visible. Top and right edges not visible. Uh, let me go this way a bit. Hold steady. Processing. Back. Scan result. Gel Travland. Heading three. Instruction manual. Liberty Eho Proof T. Okay, so this is an instruction manual for a uh, blender. So <laughs> that could have been anything, you know. Um, <laughs> that I would need to contend with in the house. So that's, that's that one. I'll close that. Three, instruction med, back, button. <clears throat> channel, menu, 95%, channel, product. So there's a product channel here as well, which I've got a bag of coffee here. I want to know if it's decaf before I open it. Um, so I think it's probably got a barcode on it somewhere. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I've changed it to the channel called product. And let's see, I've probably not got the... Barcode on this side, I might have to flip it over. Right. Let's see if it's on the other side. Ooh. Okay, let's take it up here. Okay. Obviously, I tried this before and it was very responsive. Let's try that again. So it's looking for a barcode. I think the lighting might be, it's, it's much better in natural light. <laughs> no, I think that the lighting is, is fooling it. Are you going to do it? That noise tells me that the barcode is within sight. Let's just try. That's, I usually kind of center the camera. Processing. OK. Taylor's decaffeinated ground coffee, 227G. Taylor's Greek decaffeinated coffee, 227 grams. Share. But more info. And there's button. a more info button here. So if I go info, back, there. Button. More info. Taylor's decaffeinated ground coffee 227G. Heading once opened, store in an airtight container for two weeks in the fridge or four weeks in the freezer. Okay, so it gives me a lot more information there about what I should do or not do. Cross more info. <clears throat> Close button. Just show you a couple more channels quick help. in button. action here. Channel. P person. So person. Switch to front camera button. This Switch is something that uh, 
Hector mentioned about. I'll look uh, surprised. Take picture button. Take picture processing. Thirty-four-year-old man with black hair looking surprised. Thirty-four. <laughs> wow. That is cool. Okay then. It's it's spookily accurate. But what I'm going to do now is give the give the lie to that because. Currency preview. Oh, actually, um. Scene preview. Color preview. So there's a color one here. If I put that on my hair. Oh no, go on. Brown and gray. Brown and gray. Gray. It's that, yeah, gray, see? It just said gray before. So uh, that kind of puts a light to the 37, doesn't it? See, currency preview. Um, we've got some currency here. So money, I mean, I know we've gone plastic now, so that kind of helps definitely. But I think when the 20s go plastic as well, we're going to be able to struggle there as we did before. So here we go, just wave the money at it. 10 pounds. Okay, so that's ten pounds, and I've also got one of these. Let's try that. Twenty pounds. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's really good. Um, the last one channel I want to show you in scene this preview. seeing color AI preview. Handwriting preview. is handwriting. Um, I asked my wife to write a note, and I think she's done it big, hasn't she? So that you guys can read what she's written. But it's handwriting, isn't it? It's not kind of printed or anything. So let's see what this note that she's left me is oh actually i think i need to take a picture take picture button. button processing two good cards gone to come shops back at 5 30 p.m Redo. back at 5 30 p.m i think i might oh love you xx actually i think there's some i think there's some other writing down on this thing as well because it was picking up other stuff but you've got the the message there gone shopping back at 5 30 love you that's nice. Okay, so that one is seeing AI. It's incredibly powerful. It works really good under natural lighting, I think. I'm under some kind of really glary spotlight or something, which was probably giving it more grief than usual. Have a look at some of the videos that are online that Soundscape. show seeing AI in Don't action. And the other one that I want to show you is called Soundscape. Soundscape. <clears throat> no big and set. Menu. So, in this app, now unfortunately, because I haven't got the adapter, which means that I'm going to be able to um, not be able to plug it in, but um, this is an app that has mobility or navigation cues for people uh, who are blind. It takes all the POIs, the points of interest, the data points that it knows about buildings, shops, parks, etc. And as you're walking along, it can tell which direction you're walking using GPS. And as you're walking past these items, it announces those items in sort of stereophonic uh, 3D spatial sound. So if there is something that you're passing, at the point of announcement, it's at sort of 10 o'clock, you know, slightly to the left, then it will sound like it's coming from that direction. And I'm really sorry because I wanted this to come out through the speakers because I wanted to turn the phone around. As well as walking, you can take the phone out of your pocket and you can lay it flat like that. And then as you turn the phone around, the, the things that are announced actually move around in 3D space. But I'll just show you what Call it sounds like. Button. Set a beacon. No beacon set. My location. Around me. Button. Ahead of me. So button. ahead of me is an... Tap this button to hear about landmarks in front of you. So if I tap that and then hold my phone flat, it will announce all of the things that it knows about in the direction that the phone is pointing and how far away they are. Ahead of me. Ahead of you. Rebecca Hossakar Gallery around 30 yards. Radio works around 35 yards. The Lucan around 40 yards. But if I turn it this way. First intuition around 50 yards. Simmons around 65 yards. And turn it this way. Oh, it's finished. Okay, so it, go, it keeps on announcing things in the direction that you turn your phone. And as if I had my ears in, which I would do as I was walking along, as I turned corners or as I moved my phone around to see which direction I wanted to go, those points would be spoken uh, and would sort of pan around my head as I was uh, moving around. So that's incredibly powerful. If uh, we go to the next slide, then we're definitely going to be introduced to this lady now. Let's plug her in. Alexa, hello. Hello. I'll just put her up a bit. <clears throat> so trying to think about what to demonstrate on this echo 
is a bit like going into a supermarket and saying, what should we have for dinner? So <laughs> it's really, really difficult. Obviously, this is meant for the home market, but there are so many different corporate, retail, uh, other companies that are jumping on this because they want everybody to be able to access information about their products, their services, their organization um, in the home, but there are going to be these uh, echoes built into, well, there already are in cars, in other mobile devices so that you can talk to the A lady wherever you are. So let's just have a quick blast about the sort of things that you could ask her. Alexa, how tall is the BT Tower? The BT Tower in London, England is 625 feet tall. That's pretty tall. Alexa, how many people does BT employ? This might answer your question. According to Zach's investment research, last year, AT&T employed 252,000 people. Alexa, how many people does British Telecom employ? Sorry, I don't know that. Oh, sorry. Actually, she did answer earlier. Um, we had a sum earlier that was, uh, what was it, 40,000 cubed? Alexa, what is 40,000 cubed? 40,000 cubed is 64 trillion. Wow. You can ask really practical things like, Alexa, what am I doing tomorrow? Tomorrow, there are two events. At 10 a.m. there's client call with Ados. And at 1.30 p.m. there's meeting with British museums. Alexa, what's the weather going to be like tomorrow? Weather alert for Warwick. There's a flood alert in effect. Tomorrow, you'll see clouds with a chance of showers and can expect a high of 8 degrees and a low of 0 degrees. So she still thinks we're in Warwick because that's where she usually lives. Um, you can do so much. You can obviously play music. You can play every internet radio station in the world. You can read audio books. You can even have your Kindle books read out to you. And you can play games. Alexa, open Shadow Realm. Welcome back. The space widens, and you can see a larger room carved Alexa? out of the Earth. Stop. <laughs> Thanks, your progress has been saved. Create an account at daysfly.com and say, Alexa, tell Shadow Realm to link my account, or within the game just say, Days Fly, for additional game features, including hints and saved games. Thank you for playing. I'm going to have to pick a better demonstration there that doesn't have such waffle at the end. So... This is incredibly empowering. Now, this again is a mainstream device. It's aimed at being useful for, you know, convenient, cool for people in the home. But just think about how incredibly empowering this is for people with disabilities. When computers and websites went from a big screen to the mobile phone, that really helped people with vision impairment, cognitive impairment, everybody, because those websites, those apps were distilled down into a really clean, um, you know, minimal experience because of the size of the screen. And when you go to a natural language interface like this, then this is the kind of pinnacle of distilled interfaces where you just talk to it. And I know some of them have screens, but not all of them by any means. At the heart of these uh, ambient computing devices is just you talk to the air and she gives you some information back again. <coughs> so, oh, and also you can do uh, environmental control. So we talked a moment ago about eye gaze and how that's become uh, really much more affordable. Um, environmental control used to be the realm of the specialist, really, really expensive devices. But now with IoT and, you know, smart homes, anybody, my sister who's blind and also has MS, is able to control all of the gadgets and devices and open and close curtains and turn lights on and off very inexpensively because of these devices. So we've looked at things like object recognition with seeing AI. We've looked at navigation with uh, um, sound space. But, and we've looked at AI here with the A-Lady. If you combine all of those together, then you get driverless vehicles, which I'm just going to finish off by... Um, mentioning those because that's the thing I'm most excited about. Um, they're just around the corner, honestly. Um, so there was an announcement earlier this week about when driverless vehicles would be 
on the streets of America without anyone behind the steering wheel. No one in the vehicle at all. So this um, is going to be a reality. Anyone want to have a guess at when this might come into fruition? 2020? This year. Even before the deadline for submissions to T4G, which is what, May the 9th. So April the 2nd is when you will see, or in America, in both California and Arizona, you will see cars without anyone behind the wheel at all, driving around completely autonomously, you know, paving the way for um, legislatures to decide that, yes, these are definitely working now, this is a viable thing. So it's definitely going to happen sooner than you think. If it had been one day earlier, I might have thought that that was an April Fool. But no, 2nd of April is when we will see completely empty autonomous cars driving around in America, and it won't be too much longer before they'll be here as well. So technology has huge potential to uh, impact the lives of many people for better. We know, we've heard it mentioned today, that it can also, like any tool, be used uh, in more negative ways as well. But the Tech for Good Awards are all about how technology is really making the world a better place. Thank you. <laughs>